There you go. All right, it's recording. Thank you very much. Okay, give you, a, you know, in, in NLP, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, there are so many things, there's so many tools. NLP for me helps me influence people very fast. It helps me understand myself very fast. It helps me communicate people and put things into their heads very fast, yeah? Um, and, and in NLP itself, there's so many tools. And from those many tools, I'm just going to take just two, yeah? So from the NLP, I'm just going to take two tools and incorporate these two tools into resume writing or CV writing. Now let, let's not get into the debate of what is a resume and what is a CV. That's a totally different discussion, okay? Regardless of resume maker or CV, you're going to use these two tools, number one, matching and mirroring, and number two, you create your own experiences into your resume. And I'm going to show you how, yeah? I'm going to take out the terminology, the mambo jumbo of NLP and pull it out. I'm just going to show you how to use these two tools into your resume, yeah? And it will begin with this, these two presuppositions, presuppositions that which I'm going to show you. Number one, people will get attracted with one another when they have something in common. Yeah? When you have something in common between you and me, we easily make friends. Simple presupposition. Yeah, a very simple presupposition. Let me give you an example. Um, uh, can I speak to Iswan? Iswan, can you hear me? Iswan from Stewan? Uh, he cannot hear me. Okay. Let's use Tuti. Tuti, can you hear me? Uh, hi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Iswan. Very good. You can hear me. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Iswan, are you married, Iswan? Yes, married with uh, two daughters. Alhamdulillah. Iswan. Now, when there's something in common with you and once upon a time ago, your, your future wife, only then were you attracted to one another. Yes or no? Yes, exactly. Yeah, there you go. So I do not believe in opposite attract. <laughs> no such thing. <laughs> now some, some people say, hey, that guy, uh, he very tall, the, the girlfriend very big, and, but they love one another. Well, there's something in common between these two. Maybe both of them like hiking. Maybe both of them like the same food. Maybe they have uh, you know, similar lifestyles. Because of that, therefore they got attracted, okay? So here's the first fact that you want to take, take in, yeah? When there's something in common between you and me, we easily make friends. We are not magnets. So no, there's no such thing as, you know, opposites attract. Number two, second presupposition, okay? Again, again whatever we learn in NLP, those two tools, we're gonna to incorporate it through these presuppositions, yeah? The second presupposition would be this. The more you show what you have in common with your employer to be, the more they'll be attracted. So for example, you, you, you find this person and you find that this person likes the color blue and you want to attract that person. So what would you do? Yeah, let's ask uh, Tuti. Tuti, there's this particular person who likes the color yes. blue and you want to attract that person towards you. What, what color uh, dress would you wear the next day? Of course, blue. Blue. Not only would you wear your dress blue, you would wear your hijab blue, you would wear your yes. socks blue, yeah, you would change your name to blue. <laughs> so when the more things you show, thank you, Tuti, the more okay. things you show in common between you and your employer to be, the more your employer to be will be attracted to you. So it's not about being better than the other candidate. It's about being in common with your employer to be. You know, so many people out there looking for jobs, they are, they are in competition with the candidate next, sitting next to them. 
and they're feeling, oh, this person is much, dressed much, much better than I. This person has a CV which is thicker than mine. This, pro this person must be probably have, have an extra degree than me. And, and you get all stressed out. But the thing is this, you're not in competition with anybody. Your job is to show how much you are in common between you and your employer, yeah, your employer to be. How much you are in common with the job they're offering. And you need to show that. And you need to show that in your resume. Yeah? Not in a, we're not talking about interview yet. Yeah? The only reason you got into the interview is because of the resume. Yeah? Your resume is the ticket for the concept. Yeah? So you, you have to show how much you are in common between you and your employer to be in the resume. That's the art of it, in the resume. When you, go, when you get the interview, uh, then you show what's in common between you and your interviewer in a physical sense of the word. But before that interview, you have to show how much you are in common between you and your employer to be, between you and the job they're offering in your resume. And many people don't do that, yeah? Let's ask, ask Fauzi there. Fauzi, once upon a time ago, uh, when you were looking for a job, you sent out resumes, right? Yeah. Yes. All right, question Fauzi. How many kinds or how many types of resume did you send out? One type. One standard, type. Standard resume. Standard, standard <laughs> resume, one type. And you send it out to, for example, 100 companies, right? And you know, Fauzi, you know that company A and company B and company C all have different requirements, right? So if you send only one type of resume, a standard resume, it may match the requirements of company A, but it may not match company B and company C. Am I right, Fauzi? Yes. So, so you know what you were doing at that moment of time, Fauzi? You were gambling. You were hoping, you were hoping that this resume that I throw out to all these people, somebody may just grab the bait. Somebody must just get it. Thank you, Fauzi. Dalam bahasa right. ini, dah biasa yang sebut tabu je resume. Tabu je. Yeah, just, just throw it out. <laughs> hoping somebody gets it. <laughs> and to me, that's gambling. And gambling is in, in Islam is haram. <laughs> So right now, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna make your resume so spot on, so focused that it matches the requirements of companies as you will see it in the advertisement of the, the, the job advertisement that they come out with, yeah? All right. Now, before you get all into all this, yeah, before you get into writing that resume, you must prepare yourself with these two things. Number one, do your research about the company. Do your research about the job they're offering. Again, yeah? Before you write that resume, before you hold your pen, <laughs> you pen down your resume, yeah? These two things are very, 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 very important. Because these two things will be your content. These two things will be what you will show how you can match the job, how you can match the employer to be. But if you don't do your research and you don't know, then what are you going to match yourself to? Yeah? Okay. So when we talk about do your research on the company, yeah, what would you want to know? How about you list down on the chat box there? What would you want to know about the company? When I say do your research on the company, what would you want to know? Write it out on the chat box there. Eh? Let's see what you, you have. What business they're in. Very good. Thank you, Lily. Yeah, their business profile. How long have they been in the business? Very good. Their background. And we talk about background. You want to go specific. What do you mean by background? Uh, is it their financial background? Is it their history? Yeah. Uh, job scope 90. We talk about job scope later on. 
Let's talk about the company. Yeah. Now, when we talk about the company, when you say about background, for example, what's their nature of business? Are they into retail? Are they into construction? Are they, are they, are they into hotels? Are, 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 they, are they into research? Are they an academic establishment? What's, what's their nature of business? Yeah. Even when you talk about in construction, what are they into? When you talk about construction, are they into like building high rise kind of buildings or low cost houses or building um, plat oil platforms in the middle of the sea? Because that all comes under construction. What specifically? Yeah, what's their niche? You also, when we talk about background, you want to find out what's their financial background. Yeah, Are they still in the red? <laughs> Or are they in the black? Yeah. Isamuddin, when I say in the red, in the black, what do I mean? What, what, what would you understand by that? In the red, in the black. Are they in the red or are they in the black? What do you understand by that, Isam? Maybe that company has established or stay bungkus already. <laughs> more or less, more or less, more or less. Yeah. In the red means they're not, they're not doing very good lah financially. Yeah. In the black means uh, they, they, they're coming out with profits. Yeah, you, you want to know. Yeah, you don't want to get into a company which is, they, they may have a good name, but you know they're all in debt. Yeah. Yes, you want to know who their board of directors are. You know, some some companies they have this is like a triangle kind of thing. You have that head honcho up there, but some companies they have this board of directors there. And then you want to make the, you may want to take also pay attention who these board of directors are. Yeah, are they mostly mainly made up of politicians or professionals? And that's important also. Yeah, and when you talk about politicians, politicians preside. <laughs> yeah, that's important to know also. Yeah, if you come into a company where there's a lot of politicians, then you have most likely a company which always gives and gives and gives to help the people, help the people, and the company goes down the drain. <laughs> because it's people first, then company. Yeah, but if you have a group of professionals on the board, then most likely these are the group of people who talk about company first, company first, company first, and anything extra. Then we give to the people. Then we give to the staff. Now both have its pro and cons. But it's for you to decide what you want to get into. Yeah. All right. So you want to know whether this this company has services or or, or products or even both. Yeah. If services, what kind of services? If products, what's the whole range of products? Yeah. Because later on, later, later, later on, you don't want to get into a company in the, in the interview and you say, oh, this company do what? Huh? Uh, you do not want to ask that kind of questions. <laughs> Quickly, you will lose your job. Yeah. All right. Then you want to do the research on the job. Now, what about the job would you want to know? Type it on the chat box. What about the job that you would like to know? When you say do research on the job, I mean the, the, the job they're offering yeah, in the in the job advertisement. What would you what would you want to know about the job? Yeah, exactly. What will you be doing? Actually, yeah. And when we say what will you be doing, what will you be doing specifically? Yeah. Because usually in the advertisement, there are, you see a lot of general statements over there. They don't really specify what you're doing. Yeah. What skills needed? Very good. Is it a new role? Is it replacing somebody else? Very good. Now, one of the questions I find would be very beneficial for you to ask yourself is, what's the worst case scenario in the job? Again, eh? one, of the, one of the questions I find very useful to ask yourself is, what is the worst case that you will face worst situation that you will face in the job. For example, once upon a time ago, I used to recruit uh, engineers who are supposed to work in the middle of the sea and they are to build oil platforms right in the middle of the sea. So that's their job, just build oil platforms. Once they build the oil platform, meaning when they go out to sea, there's nothing there. Uh, when they leave, there'll be an oil platform there. That's, that's their job, yeah? And uh, before I interview them, I would tell them the worst thing that will happen to them in the job. Yeah, 
I will tell them they will like be in the middle of the sea, far from land, weeks on end. Yeah, there's nothing to see, no trees. You know, for the first three days, it's still okay. After the third day, you know, you start to long to see something green in front of you. Yeah, and then you won't be you won't you won't be uh, working on a stable platform. You'll be working on a batch. Yeah, what does it mean working on a batch? You'll be like that on a daily basis, depending on the weather lah. You know, good weather like that. Bad weather is like ah. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 if there's a uh, emergency at home, you cannot just like fly back like that. No, no, no. Probably it's too far away. You will have to take a tugboat. And when we talk about tugboat, it's not like speedboat. It's got like do 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 kind of thing. <laughs> so I'll give them the worst case scenario. Then I say, okay, you guys uh, decide, think about it, call your moms or whatever it is, and then whoever's left in the hall, I will interview you. 10 minutes later, I come back, half the class have left. <laughs> so the other half will stay. Then they know what they're getting into. So you want to know what's the worst thing that you would face in the job? Will you be facing people who will be screaming at, at, at your face on a daily basis? Would you, be, uh, would you be working outside in the hot sun all day long? Uh, would you be uh, working with two bosses? Uh, that's a worst case scenario also. Yeah. What's, what's the worst thing that you will face in the job? Yeah. And you want to know. So again, before you write a resume, do your research. I cannot emphasize so much about this too. Do your research about the company and about the job. If you're still with me, show me a why on the chat box uh, as a sign of yes, you're still with me. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Cool. Alhamdulillah. All right, let's move on. Okay. So here now, you're going to learn the secret of what's, what makes your resume different from other people. What's your, what makes your resume stand out? And, and this is hardly taught in any resume writing class. So that's why it's a secret. Yeah. That's so. Let's open the vault. And what's the secret? This is the secret. Answering the advertisement in the true sense of the word. Now, you can either take a screenshot of this or you take a picture of this up to you. But I, as I'm explaining this, I, I don't want you to be busy writing. Okay, So take a screenshot of this or, 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 or take a picture of this. So I, when I explain to you the technique, you'll understand what it means and how to do it. Yeah. And don't worry, we'll, we'll do an activity shortly. Okay, I'm gonna give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, okay, let me explain. Now listen carefully. Highlight the words in the job advertisement which describes the person they are looking for. Now, you, you, we, we must understand in the frame of mind, of, uh, of the employer, of the company. You see, the HR of that company was instructed by the bosses to come up with an advertisement because they have this vacancy of a job, okay? Now, the HR person, when they come up with an advertisement, there's a lot of discussion between the HR and the advertiser, the person who comes up with the advertisement, yeah? And what, in these discussions, the words that you put, that the HR person puts in the advertisement must be carefully selected to ensure that the person they attract will be the person worthy for the job, worthy for the interview. So this advertisement is a very, 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 very well thought of document, actually. Even to the, to, the, to the extent of the color schemes of the advertisement, yeah? It's, it's thoroughly discussed. So when you are at, uh, applying for the job, you want to take note of the words used in the advertisement. So number one, what you do is you highlight the words 
of the person they are looking for, the description of the person they are looking for. For example, uh, we are looking for somebody who has five years experience. We are looking for people who has good leadership skills. We, have, we are looking for people who is able to work as a team. Uh, Tuti, can you add any more words that people are looking for? Or what, what kind of people are they looking for? Academic qualification, perhaps? Uh, yeah, well, yeah you, they, they, these people uh, may have a degree in mechanical engineering, for example. Yeah. Thank you very good. Yeah? These people are able to work under pressure, for example. Yeah? So these are the words which describe the people they are looking for. Please, number one, the, your step one is highlight those words. Then you list out these words on a separate piece of paper. You take it out, you put it on a separate paper, you list it out. Okay, and then you say, ah, these are the type of person you're looking for. Question number one you want to ask yourself is, am I that? <laughs> From all that, 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 that description of the people, you are, am I that? The majority, lah, the majority of the things that they are looking for, the type of person they're looking for, am I that? If the majority says, is actually shouting, yes, I can actually see my name there, eh? then you can proceed to go to the following steps. But as you're looking at the, 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 job, descri the job description, the person they're, they're looking for as they're describing in all those words, and you don't feel that you can even see your name there, then it's not worthy for you to apply. Don't apply. Go apply somewhere else. Maybe this is not the job for you. Yeah. Now let's say yes, about like 50% of what you see there is, 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 is like shouting your name. Okay, then you can go on to the next step. Briefly describe yourself in your application letter or email, yeah? Uh, either how you, you interact with the company, like, it's either through letter or through email. Describe yourself and use the same words. Remember those words that you, you, you highlighted just now? of the, the type of person they're looking for, you reuse those words as you're describing yourself. I'll show you how shortly. I'll show you how shortly. But this is a very important step. This is how you match yourself to your employer. You match yourself to the description which they gave. And you're using the exact same words. So for example, they're looking for somebody who's able to work as a team. Then you write, I'm a person who is able to work as a team. For example, and you give an example. Because the following step, right? elaborate specific parts of your resume using the same words. Because later on in the resume, you're going to elaborate, hey, I, I am a person who is able to work as a team. For example, uh, I, used to work in, I, I used to be in the school basketball team and I played the position of this. And because of me working in the team, we won second place in the, in the national tournament, for example. Yeah. So here you are, number one, you are matching yourself to the requirements which they mention. Number two, you explain, yes, I do have this as per your description. And here are the examples in my life. These are the things that I did in my life which highlights that that highlights that, that description. Okay, now let's, let's give you an example. This is a lot of talk, okay? Let's show you how. Now, this is an example of a job advertisement, okay? Degree in mechanical engineering, computer literate, knowledge of AutoCAD, can work independently, highly motivated, strong analytical skills, fluent in English, you know, the, the, the normal stuff that people write out in an advertisement. Now, remember what you do first? You highlight the words which describe the person they are looking for. So watch, look at the screen. This is what you do. You highlight it. These are the words which describe the person they are looking for. And then you take those words, you put it aside, and then you look at those words and you say, mm, do I match this? If I do, you go to the next step. If you highlight all these words and you look, put it outside and you say, mm, do I match this? 
No, I don't. Throw it away. Go find another job advertisement. Okay. All right. Now watch. Using those these words that you have highlighted, you now write your application email or application letter. Okay. Watch the screen. Those same words come out. There you go. So, so what happens? The HR person, when they get your application, they, they're reading your application and they say, oh, this person has a degree in mechanical engineering. And then they look at their requirements just to remind themselves, they're human also. Yeah? They, they look at their requirements. What are we looking for? Are oh, we looking for a person who has mechanical engineering? Hey, same lah. <laughs> it's the same. Then they look in your application letter some more. Or oh, this person here is very in independent. What's our requirement? Are oh, we looking for somebody who's independent? How oh, the same lah. <laughs> so what you're doing slowly is you're matching the requirements mentioned in their advertisement word for word. Suddenly you match them like that. Now remember. When there's something in common between you and me, we easily make friends. When there's something in common between you and your employer-to-be, your employer-to-be will be interested. This is how you match your employer-to-be. And the best thing is, all this information is already provided by them in their advertisement. It's not something you have to thoroughly research and find out how am I going to match the employee? No, 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 no. It's already there. Use the words. So now when they read your application letter, it means something to them. Why? Because it's the words they use in the first place. Now, how many of you, whatever I just said just now makes logic to you, you know, gives you, makes sense to you. I want you to check on the type on the chat box that say yes. Okay. There you go. There you go. Now imagine, imagine if you write a standard resume, a resume which did not match the advertisement. <laughs> yeah. Just because they're saying we're looking for somebody who has a uh, uh, who, who, we're looking for somebody who has a degree in mechanical engineering. You have a degree in mechanical engineering. It's just that. The other requirements you don't match, and you still send that resume. In your mind, you're hoping, you're hoping they'll just include you, la, you know? In this particular technique that you're using with me right now, you're ensuring that they call you. Why? Because you're using the same words that they use. Now, now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask, especially for those of you who are fresh graduates out there, I'm sure some of you are worried, you know, what if, uh, what if uh, they write in their requirement in the advertisement, they're looking for somebody who has CGPA 4.0. How many of you, that's a concern for you? How many of you are worried if the advertisement writes, we're looking for somebody who has high CGPA 3.0 and above, type that, say me or yes, come on. How many of you say it's a concern for you? You're worried about that. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. They're all worried. <laughs> okay. This is the technique. This is the technique. Okay. This is the technique. From, let's say from six or seven requirements that the interviewer has, yeah, that, that you write it out, six or seven requirements. And then one of them, they say, we're looking for somebody who has high CGPA, at least 3.0 and above. This is what you do. You fulfill all the other requirements first, and you be silent about that one. <laughs> when I say be silent, don't mention it. Don't talk about it. Don't even say, I do not have a CGPA 3.0 and above. Don't say anything. Just be silent. 
it's already in your resume later on to show that your CGPA is 3.0 uh, and below. Yeah, and, and, and you're not lying. You're, you're not lying to say uh, my CGPA is high. No, no, you're not lying. Is this why I'm, why I'm saying is just be silent about it so that you match all the other requirements first. When the employer or the HR person looks at your resume, they are saying, oh, they, they, they match this, they match this, they match that. Like, oh, they don't match that one. Now mm. not call up. So what you're doing is you're giving yourself an opportunity. You're giving yourself that opportunity to show that, hey, I match all the rest. Call me. Nah. So go ahead, write that resume. Match all the other requirements and just be silent about that 3.0 kind of thing. Ah, here's a good question from Aisha. What if it's an entry level position, but they require one to two years working experience? Should I be silent too? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> just be quiet about it. Just be quiet about it. Yeah. And you match all the other requirements word for word. That allows you to be given an opportunity. And when they read that, if, they, if, 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 if that company says, oh, our priority is we will not look at anybody who has CGPA 3.0 and above, and yeah, okay, fine. Go and look for another company. Lah. But you see, not all companies are like that. Because why? Because there are not many people whose CGPA is 3.0 and above. <laughs> there are not many people who match all these other requirements. They, you may not be able to match that 3.0 CGPA, but the person, the other candidate, might not be able to match good communication skills, might not be able to match good teamwork skills, might not be able to match all the other skills, all the other requirements. So you go ahead, match all the other requirements first, and you be silent about the one that you cannot. So that you will, you will get that opportunity. You're making an opportunity for yourself to ensure that you get the interview. Because always remember, the other candidate may not match the other requirements. Are you still with me, everybody? Type yes over there on the chat box. Come on. There you go. There you go. Very good. Cool. Let's do an activity. Oh, yeah. This, this red point here I, 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 I highlight over here is an example which I said. You match them, and then you give an example of it. So you match one requirement, and then you give an example from your experiences in life. So in this particular case, this person says he was independent. Yeah, he is an independent person. He matched the requirement. Then he gave an example. He was a committee member in engineering wing, and he was solely in charge of this. this, this, this. So he's giving an example of it. OK? All right. It's not about format. It's not about your format of your resume. There's so many formats. There are books written about formats of resume. In this particular technique, it's all about content. It's, it's like this, for example, um, you go to Unique Law and you buy that T-shirt, yeah? And then when you walk out of Unique Law and then suddenly you see somebody walking <laughs> with the same T-shirt. <laughs> but what makes you different from that person, even though you're wearing the same T-shirt, is you. It is not the clothes that make the man, it is the man that makes the clothes. Same goes for your resume. What makes you different? You being an, a, a, a de having a degree in accountancy and the person next to you also having a degree in accountancy, what makes you both different? Content. What you write in that resume. And in this particular case, whatever you write must match the requirements which is in the advertisement. Then not only do you make yourself different from the other candidates, 
you're saying you are relevant to the job. Follow me? All right. Let's do an activity now. Get ready uh, a, a piece of paper and pen. You're going to do this activity and you need to write it out. Okay. Now, these are sentences, words, which you normally find in any advertisement. Yeah. They are looking for somebody who has good communication skills, strong leadership skills, good organization skills, able to work as a team. You, you normally find it in any advertisement. Okay, so this is your this is your activity right now. Okay, I want you to pick at least two from this. Yeah, and then you're going to write how you match those words, how you match those requirements. Now you need it. You need to put it in this structure. Now listen carefully. It sounds like this: I have good communication skills. For example. And then you label it. It must be that way. Okay. I have strong leadership skills. For example, I'm able to work as a team. For example, it must be in that format. Okay. Because it, when you use those words, what you're saying is you do match what they want. And you can elaborate and you can give examples to it. Now, Bear in mind, whatever example you give, it can be at any time. Meaning at any time means it will not necessarily be uh, during your degree time. It may be during your kindergarten time. It may be nothing related and, at all to, to, to education. For example, for example, for example, strong leadership skills. Yeah? How many of you feel that you've never held any position in the society, in your, in your clubs before, you know, you never held any post, type it on, your, on, on the chat box. Yeah. How many of you come under that, that category? You've never held any post in any position in, in any club or society during your study time. Can you type yes as a sign? Or are you too shy to type yes? <laughs> For those of you, <laughs> for those of you who've never had, you know, uh, 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 the, the experience holding a post, and then you say, oh, they're looking for strong leadership skills, then what example can I give? This is what you write. I have strong leadership skills. For example, during my semester break, I take care of my 10 brothers and sisters, and that takes strong leadership skills. <laughs> there you go. That's it. You see, the company doesn't know, doesn't want to know where you get the skills. The company is only interested to know whether you do have the skills or you don't. <laughs> yeah. So yes, I have strong leadership skills. During the semester break, I take care of my 10 brothers and 10 sisters. And that takes very strong leadership skills. <laughs> There you go. You don't need to say, "Hey, I, I, I have never, I, 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 I've never held posts in, in any society or club. So how am I going to show I got strong leadership skills?" See what I mean? Okay. All right. Now, this good communication skills. Now, some, some people they make the mistake. Yeah, I, I can speak nine languages, for example. That doesn't mean you have good communication skills. That only tells me that you can speak nine languages. <laughs> And when forwardly, you speak to the mirror. <laughs> Good communication skills means you're able, you're, you, the ability to influence people, the ability to communicate ideas, yeah, the uh, the the ability to negotiate. That, that, that comes, comes under good communication skills, the ability to present, yeah. Good organization skills are the ability to go organize work. For example, I have good organization skills. My lecturers often give me assignments, different lecturers, different assignments, different deadlines. I manage them all correctly and manage to send all my assignments on time. Hey, good organization skills. <laughs> there you go. Now I have strong leadership skills. I am admin for 20 WhatsApp group. No! 
<laughs> Why? Because you have you cannot show whether you play a role in each of this. Leadership skills means the ability to lead. It's not being the 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 the, the, the boss. It's, it's the ability to lead. So you, the things that you want to state, how many people do you lead? Lead towards what? What did you achieve as that leader of that group? Yeah. How did you manage to, 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 to manage the team to ensure that everybody get their work done? That's good leadership skills. Yeah. All right. Okay. So again, using at least, at least any of these two sentences, I want you to start to write out. Yeah. If you can write it out on the chat box, there, that would be nice so that I can see whether you're, you're doing it right. I'm going to give you three minutes to do this. And three minutes is a lot of time. Yeah? Ready? Begin. Examples I got from everybody. Let, let, let's look at some. Let's look at some. Uh, you, I have I have strong communication skills as I regularly conduct meetings and have to negotiate with team members to complete our tasks. Very good. You may want to add a, a specific uh, experience you had. You know, uh, with whom did you talk to? With, with which group? You know, put in more details there, especially in your resume later on. Put in more details there. Yeah, this is still very general. Yeah. Uh, Jayan Hisamudin says, "I have strong leadership skills. For example, I'm currently managing a team of a, a team of training group." a team training group and able to make them also as a team with me you want to say you want to mention how uh, how actually did you manage them what did you do uh, who's this 
team training group ni you know mention the the, the name of that, that that team for example yeah kat sabah ni ah yeah right so i have strong leadership skills i'm the vice president of public relation okay kat sabah ni this here is the point kat sabah ni saying that you're the president of this public relation punya club doesn't tell me that you have strong leadership skills for for all i know in that club there's only two people <laughs> you went to <laughs> You see, so you want you want to show your ability to lead. Just holding the position doesn't mean that you have strong leadership skills. Yeah. So you want to explain, oh, I I, I lead this group of a hundred people. Among our activities are we do this on a weekly basis. For example, some something. How did you lead this group? What did they do? as a group what were the achievement achievements of the group and you were the leader uh, you see very good uh, no rights i have good communication skills for example able to communicate across all levels in the organization be it the support group or the management team what is important yeah very good very good spot on boleh I have good communication skills. ZNM says I have good communication skills. For example, I was given the opportunity to be the MC for the company's town hall that was attended by yeah, specific good. There you go. So now you understand. This is called answering the advertisement. Now, with that, I'm sure there are a few questions coming out your head now. <laughs> what kind of questions are coming out your head right now? This question. By matching every requirement word for word and then supporting them with examples, wouldn't your resume be a bit lengthy? <laughs> now, uh, if you ask all these uh, fresh graduates, especially, uh, I'm sure their teachers and lecturers told them, Uh, let, let's see, let's see, let's ask them now. Uh, for those of you who are fresh grads or still in the university right now, your lecturers always told you to write resumes or CVs. Uh, how many pages? Can you write down a number on the chat box, please? Two, two. <laughs> One even, huh? <laughs> now, so if you follow this technique, Your resume is not going to come out one or two pages, ma. <laughs> It's going to be lengthy, <laughs> at least five. <laughs> you know. So, so how? <laughs> so let's let's break the myth, <laughs> the two-page myth of a resume. I'm going to break the myth. <laughs> here's how, here's how you break the myth. Yeah, the cheat dongeng. How much can you talk about yourself in two pages or less? Really, think about it. Think about it. Now, for those of you who say, "Hey, I'm fresh graduate. I have no experience." Really, really, you spent at least, like, at least four years in the university. Four years. In those four years, did you have a uh, good leadership skills? Were you able to work as a team? Were you able to uh, work under pressure and all those other requirements? Yeah. I mean, your life in university was not wake up, go to class, go to toilet, go back home, sleep, and then wake up, go to class, go to toilet, go to sleep. No, 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 no. It was you had a whole rage. You had a life, four years of your life, and you don't tell me you have no experience. You have a lot of experience. So yeah, that experience cannot be compressed <laughs> into pages. Ridiculous. And, 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 and here's another thing about the myth of the two-page resume. There is no rule book. There is no buku undang-undang. There is no rule book which states that your resume when you're applying for work must be two pages. No, 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 no. It's all perceptions of people. When whatever you write in the resume, resume is relevant to the job, and when I say relevant, remember, you're using their words, the employer's words, then your two-page resume means something. 
Uh, your more than two page resume means something. It's not just words that you throw out. No, it's it's all words which has purpose. And the best thing is you match the advertisement which the employer came out in the first place. Yeah. So I say, go more than two pages. And I, I have proof of that. Remember that 16 page resume? <laughs> I have proof of that. I'm going to show you that. <laughs> and how she went for every interview and she got every interview. She sent it to any company, every company called her for interview and one or two, three companies offered her a job. I'll, I'll prove that to you. So let's get rid of this two page thing. Oh yes, th there's another way to get rid of the two page myth. Yeah, how? If you register with, uh, for example, jobstreet.com or all those online kind of write your resumes online kind of thing, yeah? And then you print it out. Does it come up two pages? <laughs> Most likely not. <laughs> Check it out, test it out. Yeah, I'm sure you put your resume online, right? Like jobstreet.com or what, what, monster.com. Yeah, and you print it out. Does it come out two pages? No. So this two page thing is, is just me. Yeah. So the question you want to ask now is what makes people read a resume which is more than two pages? What makes people read that, that 16 page resume? <laughs> What's the secret? <laughs> Drum roll, skip. The secret is <laughs> the picture. Cheng, cheng, cheng. <laughs> oh, this one, tengah this one. The picture, what has the picture got to do with it? Picture je ke? One picture je ke? No, maybe pictures. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Masing -masing in, in your head. Hey. Can put more, more than one picture in the resume, man. <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> Remember that 16 page resume? It had 11 pictures. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you later. I'll show you later. Let, let, let's, let's deal with the one picture first. Lah. Okay? Okay. What picture do you put? No. Uh, no, I can see you on camera. No? Could, you, could you switch on your microphone? See that? Yeah. What picture do you put in the resume, no? Um, I'm not too sure. <laughs> have, have you ever sent a, a, a advertisement about your resume? Yes, 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 I had sent. Yes, yes, I had sent. Yes, I had sent a few resume, but it, it, as as what they have been saying, like two or three pages without any pictures, nothing. Oh, you didn't put any picture, no? No, I don't. Never Except, of course, it. of my own personal picture, if they ask for oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Your, your face, lah, right? Yes, yes, yes. Is it, is it something like this? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, no, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you will tend to do this also, right? Passport picture of yourself. That's, I mean, what, that's what's mentioned on the, the advertisement. Eh? Please uh, include a passport picture of yourself. Right? Jaya, that's me. <laughs> Once upon a time ago. <laughs> you know. Hey. To, yeah, to, uh, got hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not only that, Tuti, my, my son said, uh, you went to school with Harry Potter. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, go back to the point. Go back to the point, point. You would probably send a picture like this, right? Okay. I, I want you to write on the chat box. You know, be, be honest with me. Be honest with me. You, when you see a picture like this, what words come in, in your mind? Please, please write on the chat box. When you see a picture of a person, in this case, me. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. Nerd. <laughs> there you go. There I would say the same thing. <laughs> nerd, newbie. Yeah. Okay, lah. Nerd, nerd, nerd. Oh, no. so, so many nerds there. <laughs> Innocent, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so smart, alhamdulillah. No experience, yeah, nerd, yeah, exactly. Now, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? When you put a picture of yourself like that, people will talk about you the same way. Nerd, no experience, freshy, <laughs> schema. <laughs> They will talk about you the same way. So here's the point. Here's the point. Why put that picture lah? <laughs> Be 
because that picture can't tell, tell much about you. And most likely, it will tell a lot of negative things about you. <laughs> Clearly, that's in the chat box there. <laughs> oh, Haris, boring, hard to get even your friend. Who yo? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so, okay, okay, let me challenge your mind. Let me now challenge your mind. Would you choose? Okay, let's say you are all now HR people, okay? And here, a resume comes in. Would you choose the person who sends the picture as in picture A, or would you choose the person who shows picture B? Put it on your chat box. Which one would you choose? The person who sends their picture as in picture A, or the person who sends their picture as in picture B? I see a lot of Bs. There's some A's, but I see a lot of Bs. <laughs> There are the more bees there. <laughs> okay, why? What can you tell about picture B? Slide the brother, that guy is handsome. Come on. <laughs> what, what, yeah, he looks smart. Yeah, okay. What else? What else can you say, talk about picture B? Hardworking. Yeah, a lot of stuff on his table. Like, it looks like hardworking. Yeah, it looks like he can work in an uh, office environment. Yeah, yeah. He looks like he can use a computer. <laughs> he looks like that. So, you know, we always say a picture tells a thousand words. Yes or no? Yeah. So why not put more things in the picture? <laughs> no, no. So, so, some of you, some of you, some of you are really looking, looking at you. You know, some of you are saying, uh, you, you're asking this question now. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, I'm going to show you Rohayas. Yes. Okay. This is Roya. Okay. And once upon a time ago, she attended my Get That Job program. Now, for those of you who know Rohaya, keep quiet. <laughs> All right. Once upon a time ago, she attended my Get That Job program. And I told her what I told you today. Okay. So she went out and she wanted to work with. Bowstep Holdings Berhad. So she took this picture and then she MMS me. Uh, during that time, there was no WhatsApp. She MMS me. <laughs> and then I said, you know, this is not so good, la, not so good picture. Give me another picture, I said. And then she took this picture herself. And there you go, Manara Bowstep. You know, Bowstep is, is in big letters right behind her. And she put this resume, uh, she put this picture as the first picture in her 16 page resume. Again, I remember, yeah? first picture. She had 11 pictures in her resume. <laughs> when they called her for interview, she got the interview. Eh? When they called her for the interview, their first response was, we find your resume interesting. Now, you have to understand the psychology behind this. Yeah, You have to understand the psychology behind this. The people in Bowstead, that company over there, the people in Bowstead, in their head, is Bowstead. Bowstead, 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 Bowstead. Daily, day in, day out, Bowstead, 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 Bowstead. And then resumes come into their office. And so many resumes come in on a daily basis. Yeah, And then one person sends a resume which has Bowstead on their resume. So remember, Boston, 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 Boston. Hey, got Boston there. <laughs> Something in common. So suddenly, the resume stands out from men, all the other resumes who send out just face picture, that net picture is now. Suddenly, this resume stands out. Remember the matching technique I told you about? Finding something in common? There you go. So why not put Bowstead in the picture? Why not? You, you want to work for Petronas, for example? Yeah, take a picture and there's Petronas behind there, or the logo Petronas somewhere behind there, or the KL Towers behind, KLCC Towers behind there, you know? And the people in, KL, in, 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 in Petronas, they suddenly, you know, Petronas, 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 oh, Petronas. <laughs> so you want to work with uh, ING? <laughs> Come up with that picture. <laughs> Or oh, you want to work with Standard Chartered? <laughs> How about that picture? 
Now, some of you are saying, hey, it doesn't look professional. What makes a picture professional? You. <laughs> Not the environment, you. If, if you want to work with a company which, which uh, manufactures teddy bears, and then here you go holding a teddy bear going like that, <laughs> Ah, that's the not professional part of you. <laughs> but you want to work with a company which manufactures teddy bears. So for example, teddy bears in their heart. You go and find that company and you take a picture in front of the company with teddy bears in their heart behind that. And there you are standing out wearing whatever official suit that you want to wear. And that makes it professional. Now again, some of you are asking, hey, there, there is no, 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 nobody who said who can do this. Yeah, exactly. There's nobody who said who you cannot. <laughs> now, here's the question that's in your head now. Didn't the advertisement say attached passport size photograph? Yeah, passport size. They didn't say what to put in the photograph. <laughs> So put lah the, 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 the Petronas picture of yourself, put it lah, passport size, if you want to lah, if you want to. But really, really, really think about it. No HR people will measure lah whether your, 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 pass, your photograph that you send is passport size. <laughs> no HR will have the time to do that. <laughs> it's something which is convenient for them. That's why they come up with all those, 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 those statements. And I know, I work in HR, in recruitment, I know. All right, here's another question. <laughs> and we put more than one photograph. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in Roya's resume, later on, I'll show you. There are 11. For example, for example, um, you uh, during your time during uh, practical training, yeah, in, in, instead of just stating in the resume you did practical training, why not put a picture there? of you at that, at that company doing practical training. Or one of your final year projects was to build a remote control car, for example. Why not, why not put a picture of you with your remote control car and you, you winning an award or something? Why not, why not put that picture also? You, you always say a picture tells a thousand words, and why not put more pictures lah? <laughs> uh, Sifu, question. Yeah. Question, great, ask. Uh, these other pictures, hmm. right, should hmm. be placed in the uh, final pages of your resume, again. Right? No, put it throughout. I mean, for example, if you're stating about uh, uh, this is uh, your example of your internship or where you did your internship, then put it there, not at the final page. Later on, I'll show you res uh, Rohaya's resume. Your okay. name. All right. Okay. All right. Let's challenge everybody now. Are you ready for another challenge? Yeah, I mean, you, you got your head blown right now, you know, about the types of picture. And then I said pictures. So how about get head blown now? How about video? <laughs> Why not put video in your resume? <laughs> At least the link, lah, you know. You want to know more? Please click this link here. <laughs> it goes to your YouTube and you talk about yourself. Hi, my name is Visa. Give a three minute video. Phew, yo. Has that been done before? Yeah. Watch this video. Google, please. Sit. As they often say in Canada, me casa as su casa. As you can see, my living arrangements are simple, modest. But I think you'll find the 14th century Parisian love seat you're sitting on to be quite comfortable. Now, Google, I don't want to pussyfoot around the issue here. So let's just get down to brass tacks. My name is Matthew Epstein, and I want to work for you. Bad. I know, I know. You look at me and all you see is a man with a mustache that makes angels weep. But I'm more than a man with a mustache. I'm a lover, a product marketer, 
and a digital strategist with a passion for bringing products to market online and offline. My goal here, simple. I want a shot at being a part of the Google product marketing team. I know I have what it takes to work alongside the Googs team to manage and bring to market the most innovative technology in the world. Google, you ever heard of the $6 million man? Well, with my marketing prowess and your engineering wonder team, we could turn him into the $324 million man. So now that we have business out of the way, let's you and I talk pleasure, shall we? Google, you're probably wondering something right about now. What kind of package can Matthew bring to the Google team? Well, now that I've slipped into something a bit more comfortable, let's talk about one of my favorite things, me. What makes me tick? What does Matthew love besides scotch, tamagotchis, and watching people fall in public and then get back up like nothing happened at all? Well, I love reading. <laughs> Oh, oh, goodness. Working out. One. Pedicures. Animals. Lastly, I love. So there you have it, Google. Those are some of the things that Matthew loves. And now that you and I become a bit more intimate, I'd like to close by addressing one last question you've probably been meaning to ask me. Is that Tom Selleck mustache real? No. No, Google, that luxurious man fur on my upper lip isn't real. But I can't assure you of one thing, Google. I am a real marketer. So, Google, in all seriousness, what I'm asking you for is one phone call and 15 minutes of your time uh, to explain to you how I believe I can add value to your product marketing team. What I can promise you is that I will, at all times, be wearing pants and I will not wear uh, a mustache to work unless you want me to. Um, but to learn more about me, see my resume, get in contact, just click the link below. Thank you. And yes, he did get a job. So, <laughs> why not send video? <laughs> for example, for example, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, scene number one. Hi, my name is Rizal. I'm ready to work for you. Scene number two. You're on the basketball court, playing basketball. Doom, 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 and you pass the ball, and then you turn to the camera. Hey, I'm able to work as a team. <laughs> Yeah, hey, there you go. Scene one, scene two, scene three. Ah, uh, in three minutes. Just a three minute video. Tapa ya one satu jam ka. But it's a three minute video full stop. <laughs> the, the human mind focus on one thing, maximum three minutes. <laughs> so, so do a three minute video about yourself. Yeah. Okay, so write, write lah. Write, write that two, two page resume. Yeah, and then at the end there, if you want to know more, click the link below. Click, goes to your YouTube. He talk. Why not? <laughs> I mean, this is the digital age. This is the video age. This is the TikTok age. <laughs> and, and, and remember, what makes that video professional is you. How you present yourself. How you present your argument. How you match yourself to your employer to be. Now, now at this moment of time, I'm going to just like open if you have a question to ask. If you have a question to ask, this would be a good time to ask a question. Come on. Before I carry on. Dijan. Yes. Tapi ya. Yes. <coughs> Tadi Kak Sabariah rubuh <coughs> question about personality. Right. Your personality, yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Kak Sabariah. Uh, yeah. Uh, how, how to how to uh, what was the question, Kak Sabariah, when it comes to personality? What was what was your question? You put it on the chat box. The personality. 
I think she was asking about, uh, you know, how do we integrate uh, personality into the resume? Is that right, Kak Sabara? Um, no, no, because you said what makes, um, okay, Masa Rizal asked, what makes you different from the other person? Remember the gambar, the picture and things like that. Uh, and then why people want to employ you. I said sometimes it's your personality and your charisma. Okay. Now, and your personality and your charisma is, is yes, very, very important. Is that in the resume level, all that charisma yeah, okay. that you have, all that personality that you have means nothing if it doesn't match the requirement in the, in the, in the CV. Exactly. In the CV. Yeah. Okay. That's all I ask, Hafi. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right, question daripada Satira. Bagaimana cara untuk menjawab soalan? How do you answer question? Okay, well, you're talking about interview here, Satira. So we're talking about resume here. Uh, let's answer these questions about interview uh, later on. Okay, right now we're just focusing on the resume only. Okay, All right. remember, you are here to learn how to incorporate NLP in the resume. Uh, yes, ZNM asks, uh, should we talk about ourselves in length in the cover letter? No, in the cover letter is just brief. It's just brief of your summary, <laughs> of your resume. Just brief. You say, you're saying that, yes, I match this, yes, I match this, yes, I match this. And you're using the words as per in the advertisement, you put it in your cover letter. Yes. Want to know more? Read the resume. In the resume, you elaborate. I have good communication skills. For example, during this, I was a community member during this time. And no, 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 no. That, that's where you elaborate in the resume. In the cover letter, no. In the cover letter, you just say, I match the requirement as per the advertisement. And you're showing it word for word. You reuse the words. In your resume, you do the same thing. In addition to that, you, you elaborate. You give specific examples. All right. Cool. How many of you are ready to see Rohaya's resume? Type that yes. <laughs> Come on, type that yes. Rohaya's 16 page resume. There you go. Now, if you look at the, can you see the resume? Yes? All right. How many of you can see the resume for thumbs up for those of you on camera right now? Yeah, you can see the resume. All right, good. Now I want you to look at the bottom corner there. Eh? 16, yeah? It's 16 pages though. <laughs> bottom left hand corner, 16 pages. Okay, this is the first page. Now she puts there one picture and her name. That's it, full stop. Now, how many of you can guess? Where did she send this resume to? Can anybody guess? Tengagara. Very good, Ted. How do you know? Two <laughs> belakang logo. There you go. Now, for 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 somebody who seldom pass in front of Bank Negara, they wouldn't know this building. Okay, but people of Bank Negara go there every day. Okay? So in their heads, Bank Negara, Bank Negara, Bank Negara, Bank Negara, Bank Negara. <laughs> so when Rohaya sends her resume with that background, people of Bank Negara quickly pick it up. So. Tip number one, first page, one picture, name, full stop. It's your cover. That already attracts. Now you have to understand the psychology of the HR executive who reads your resume. Yeah? It takes them three seconds to decide to pick up your resume. From the many resumes that come in, it takes them three seconds to decide to pick up your resume. And once they pick up and they start to read, it takes them three minutes to decide to shortlist you. Again, okay, nah? it takes them three, three seconds to decide to pick up your resume. It takes them three minutes to decide to shortlist you. Shortlist means to call you for interview. So you need to attract them very fast. That's the role of your first picture. First. Picture. It's bait. Okay? Because nobody does that. <laughs> nobody does that at all. <laughs> all right. Now, if you, can, if you see the second page of Roya's resume, uh, there's the passport photograph that you, if you want, you know, to, to chukup syarat. Now, I put lah, your passport picture over there. 
Yeah. And as we are here in the second page, I just want to emphasize on email. Yeah? When you put your email address, please put a professional sounding email address. <laughs> Not I love teddy best at gmail.com. <laughs> Uh, I wear red lipstick at gmail.com. <laughs> that's not that's not professional, especially if you're a man and you write there, I, I love I wear lipstick at gmail.com. <laughs> Big problem. Oh. <laughs> and please don't write something desperate. I'm desperately looking for a job at gmail.com. Wouldn't mm. don't work. <laughs> write a prof professional sounding email address. Mine is um, mrizalh at gmail.com. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, uh, as we go through, uh, I want you to remember to count how many pictures. How many pictures have you so seen so far? Two, very good. Now let's go to the next page. This is page three and four. Now look at education background. Roya mentions she has this degree, she has a diploma, she has SPM and so forth. And it's a lot of words, yeah? But suddenly you have this one picture of her uh, receiving her diploma. So here, the picture plays a role to make the words more interesting. Tuti, unmute yourself, Tuti. Yes, if you If you have a choice, between to read a book which has full of text and a book which has some pictures. Which one would you choose? With some pictures. There you go. Thank you. So when you have a lot of text, of course, your, your reading material gets boring. People don't want to go through all that reading material. So to ensure that people read your resume, even though your resume is 16 pages long, sprinkle some pictures, relevant pictures, for example, she took her degree, yeah? Now, does she put picture on every page? No, look at picture, look at page four. Now, I want to emphasize here how she matches the requirements of Bank Negara at that time, yeah? Number one, she describes what she did, as you can see in one, two, three, four, five, yeah? And then look at that learning point. I use my excellent interpersonal and communication skills to deal with clients resourcefulness in getting information, willingness to learn. Now, excellent, Wait, hang on, let's get this out. Okay, excellent interpersonal and communication skills. Resourcefulness, willingness to learn new experience, those words, were found in Bank Negara's advertisement at that time. So what, what Roy is saying here in her resume is, I have this experience, and during this experience, I match your requirements. How? I use my, uh, my excellent interpersonal communication skill to deal with client resourcefulness in getting information and willingness to learn new experiences, etc. Yeah. So now, when people of Bank Negara read her resume, they say, wow, you match our requirements, la. Now, here's the interesting part of it. She repeats this over and over and over again. Yeah. Now look at her, work experience, learning point. Then you go to the next work experience, corporate com at, at UITM. And then look at page uh, five. Up there, learning point. I use my excellent interpersonal communication skill. The same words. Resourceful in getting information. Same words come up. She worked in RSB Bank, an executive there for her practical training, I think. Yeah. She does the same thing. She explains what she does. And then right here up on page six, right up there, learning point. I use my excellent interpersonal communication skills. She repeats it, resourceful in getting information. She repeats the same words. So what she's saying is all these experiences she went through, she still matches the requirement. Follow me so far? Now, one thing I want to add here. 
especially for, for those of you who are fresh graduates. And you keep, you, keep, you keep saying, you know, I have no experience, I have no experience, I have no, this is the time you want to tell people that you do, how you elaborate what you do. For example, during your practical training, what did you do? Elaborate now. By this elaboration, for example, if you look at how she, she described, she did work in Jamal and Amin and Partners from September 2005 to December 2005. That's a few months. I mean, she did her practical training there. But look at the work description, what she did. She describes it in detail. When people read, it feels, it feels that you have a lot of experience. So even if during your practical training, those two months, your job was to carry boxes from point A to point B, elaborate lah. How many boxes per day? What did you carry? What was in those boxes? Elaborate. So it feels like when they read your resume, it feels that you have experience. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just gonna go through. Now, are you counting the pictures? How many pictures are? <laughs> As we go through the pictures, you will notice, yeah, Roya's face hardly is seen. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> By the time we reach page nine and 10, that's it. Remember, after picture number one, all the other pictures, its role is only to make the reading material interesting to read. So that's what makes people read your resume, even though it's 16 pages long. Now, mind you, she sends this resume to Bank Negara if you were she, when she sent it to Boston, did she change her resume? Yes, she did. Why? Because the requirement in Bank Negara and the requirement in Boston were different. So she changed the resume to match the requirements. She changed the first picture to put Boston picture there, not Bank Negara picture there. There you go. Uh, Fauzi, if you look at uh, page uh, 11 here, my face is there. Yeah, you can see my face over there. Yeah, the, the, that's, uh, she attended my, she attended my get that job program. That's why my face is there. <laughs> now, does she elaborate on every experience? No. Look at the co-curriculum here. Yeah. She talks about she was the secretary of Malam Pra Grad 1, and she describes what she did during that time, what was, what was her role during that, 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 that dinner. Yeah? Look at the learning point. I use my excellent interpersonal and communication skills to deal with committee members, resourcefulness in getting information for the sponsors using the same words. And does she elaborate every co-curriculum? No. She was the secretary of uh, Siswi Diploma Perkawatan, Persatuan Siswi. No. Uh, she was the, also secretary for Persatuan Silacaka. Does she elaborate? No. Why? Why? Because it's not important. That's number one. Number two, there's hardly anything to talk about. So she keeps quiet. She only elaborates the experience which she could relate to the requirements found in the advertisement. And, and she only elaborate experiences which she was most proud of. So imagine when she went into the interview and people say, oh, could you tell us more about this uh, Malam Prograd one? And she tells it the way she tells it, because if she was most proud of it, she's very motivated. People get to see, oh, this person is competent. This person can talk. This person is a lot of good things. Yeah. So even, what you want to elaborate on is a strategy. Because when you go for the interview, they'll probably ask you to elaborate on that. They won't talk about uh, she being the uh, member of the Persatuan Sini Sinatika. It's hardly, it's there, but it's not elaborated on. So it's not important. They won't talk about that. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes? All right. And let's go to the, just the last part of it. Are you counting the pictures? If you count it all over again, the 11 pictures here, that's about it, 11 pictures. Uh, one thing I want to highlight here is references. Uh, Fauzi, 
How many referees would you put in your resume usually? <clears throat> two. Two. Or two. Three. Yeah. Why? Why two? <laughs> Why two? I mean, you know, for some people they say, oh, two, only two only can. And cannot be family members. Hey, you're not applying for a loan, lah. If you're applying for a loan, I totally understand. You, 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 you give two referees and those two referees cannot be family members. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. But you're applying for a job. So here's the strategy. Number one, the more people who can talk about you, the better for you, lah. <laughs> so why not put more referees? You have to understand the concept of referee. You know, you know, once upon a time ago, during our grandfather, grandmother, or maybe our parents' time also, uh, the, the, they put in referees of people of, for example, politicians, uh, the, the, the ketua kampung, you know, uh, uh, this, this, these are their referees, lah, because Kononya, this person has a, a, a status in the community, so therefore, uh, if you, you have this person as a referee, then good for your resume. Those were, those were the times in the past. Right now, people want to know whether you can do the job. So the referee that you should be putting is the person who can tell this employer to be that you are right for the job. They couldn't care less who your referees are. <laughs> yeah. So why not put in more? Oh, oh, one tip, one tip. Do not put your mother as a referee. <laughs> why? Because your mother will tell all your secrets. Yeah. The employer will be, they, they will call the referees, right? And then they call your mother. And then your mother says, Oh, my son, uh, he, he's a nice boy, but you know, he sleeps in late, always watch TV. Uh, go on. <laughs> yeah, she means well. <laughs> but you know, you might stop you from getting the job. So don't put your mother as a referee. Put your father, okay. <laughs> mother, no. <laughs> All right. So why not put in more? Why, why not put in the, the, the president of your society where you were a member, when you were active in that society? Why not put in uh, what, when you did your practical training, the, your, your supervisor? Yeah. Why don't put in your favorite lecturer? Now, some of you put in the, the, the head of department. Unless you meet your head of department on a weekly basis and he, he totally knows you, then fine, can. But if you put your head of department, and your head department don't know you at all, <laughs> yeah. And then the ref, the, the the interviewer calls your head of department. Oh, do you know this guy? His name is Riza. He put you as referee. I said, I don't know. And oh, God, your resume goes down the drain. So put somebody who remembers you, who can tell good things about you, even though they're family members. Yeah? Are you with me? Yes. No. <laughs> all right. So let's get back. At this moment of time, if you have a question to ask, how many of you would like to have uh, a copy of uh, Roya's resume? Type in yes at the chat box. Eh? Type in yes at the chat box. Eh? If you like a copy of Roya's resume as a reference, yeah, please type in at the chat box over there. Say yes. OK. Well, ada syarat. <laughs> you want that, that copy of that resume? Yes, I can give it to you. I would appreciate that you would do your sharing on social media. And later on, when we put this video on YouTube, on my YouTube, uh, on my page or on, uh, on my YouTube uh, channel, please share it. And then uh, tell me that you've done that. And then I'll share you the link where you can download Roya's resume for free. Okay. As a reference, again, as a reference, remember your resume and Royal's resume cannot be the same in terms of format. It's not about the format. It's about the content. It's about the content. What makes you different from other people is content. And your content must match the advertisement. This is Raya today. Uh, she's a successful author. And uh, uh, no, she's my wife. <laughs> yeah, I married my candidate. I married my participant. Yeah. <laughs> I need to state that because you know you you're having Roya's resume, and then for those of you who say no, <laughs> I need to state that. All right. So stand up. 
with with the resume that you have now, it makes you stand out from your competitors. Why? It makes you different from your competitors. Why? Because nobody else does it. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, and all the things that you put there, the words that you put, the, the pictures that you put, is relevant to the employer to the be, to the company, to the job. Then it's relevant. It's not just words that you throw out just to make you feel, you know, you say that you're, you're better than everybody else. No, 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 no. It's just using their words. You're just reusing their words, word for word. So it's not just saying a lot of things about you. No, 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 no. It's making yourself relevant, matching yourself as much as you can. All right. So if you have a question to ask, this would be a good time to ask the question. And I would encourage you to, you know, just unmute yourself to ask that question uh, instead of just writing on the chat box. Yeah. You may ask me any questions now. Yeah. Uh, even the question on, on, on interviews. You may ask me any question at this moment of time. All right. Come on. Ask me questions now. So can yes. I put you as my reference in my resume, Lisa? Yes, because I know you. <laughs> I know what you can do. I know what you 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 are doing on on Facebook. I've been following your Facebook page. Yes, <laughs> so I will be a good referee in that sense. Yeah, cool. Thank you. All right, the rest of you, come on, ask ask me a question. Assalamualaikum, sir. Salam um, uh, What is the difference between the uh, the content of the application letter and the cover letter? Um, both are letters, number one. So when you, uh, some people call it cover letter, some will call it application letter. It's, it's just a, it's just a, it's just terminology from my point of view. Yeah, it's the same thing from my point of view. So I, it's either cover letter or application letter is is just terminology. To me, it's the same thing. Sometimes people don't even use letters anymore. They use email. You know, they they, they write to the HR people in that email as they attach their resume there in the email, they say, I'm interested in the job, in the advertisement which came out in this particular day and day. Uh, you are looking for somebody who has good communication skills. I have good communication skills. Uh, for example, did, 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 did. next paragraph, you're looking for somebody who is able to work as a team. I have a look at work as a team. All this is in that email. So it's, a, it's the same thing. So it's either we call it an application letter, cover letter, or email. It's the same thing. Yeah, I know. Next question. Come on, I'm gonna focus people on people who unmute themselves first. If you cannot talk to me face-to-face uh, -face like this, don't talk about going for interview lah. <laughs> so come on, ask. <laughs> In my program, I say, what's your bangau? Yeah. We, we, we in Malaysia, we have a song called the bangau song. Yeah? Bangau, bangau, why are you so thin? I am so thin because the fish will not come out. You know how we tend to give excuses and blame. So in my program, I say stop bangawing. <laughs> stop giving excuses. You want something, you ask for it. You want something, you go get it then. So come on, unmute yourself, ask me the question. Okay, Sifu, I want to yes. ask. Yes, Shatira. Uh, regarding interviews, bila penuh muda ke tu ditanya tentang kekurangan kamu? Mm, mm. So what's the best answer to that okay. question? Uh, can, can, can I, let's say, Satira, your, you, one day your mother-in-law-to-be uh, uh, calls you to the house, you know, because she wants mm -hmm. to know you more. She says, you know, my son, uh, tell all <laughs> good things about you. Uh, what's your weakness, uh, Satira? What would you answer, Satira? Uh, I will answer my weakness. Mm. What would you say? Would you say, um, uh, Auntie, uh, I don't know how to cook. In fact, I, I don't like cooking. I, I, I'm the grab lady, grab food lady, food panda lady. Would you tell that? No. No. Would you say, uh, Auntie, I don't like children. One of the weaknesses, I don't like children. In fact, other people's children also I don't like. You know, if I see them, I kick. Would you, would you do that? <laughs> no. No. So this is how you answer, Shatira. No. You never say your weakness, okay? okay? You answer like this. Something which I can improve is, uh, okay, for example, okay. 
Okay. Something which I can improve is time management. And I'm working on it right now. I put alarms for everything in my life. Hmm. Something, I, something which I can improve now is English. And I, I'm going for classes. I, I'm, I'm reading a lot. I'm talking to people a lot. I'm, I'm practicing a lot on it. It can be improved. I, I'm doing it. So not only are you say, uh, not only are you answering the question, mm -hmm. but you're also saying that you're doing something about it. Okay. Never ever tell people your weakness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So you just mm -hmm. reframe it by saying something which I can improve is what. Okay. All right. Good, Shatira. Next question. Next question. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can. You can. Shatira, you can. I know you have a lot of questions to ask. Next question. Okay, next question. Uh, before the interview end, uh, the interview will ask, do you have a question to ask? Mm. Jadi, kita as penunggu duga ni, uh, mm. should say, don't have a question or what is the best opinion then? Ask. <clears throat> ask. Ask lah. Yeah, you, you have to understand. An interview mm. is a scenario it's not about the employer wanting to know about you only. Mm -hmm. It's about also about you wanting to know more about the employer. Remember, mm -hmm. you're looking for a job, right? You want to mm -hmm. get into this for a long, for a long term, right? Mm -hmm. So you have every right to ask questions. In fact, that's why they gave you that opportunity yeah. to ask. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, unless you really don't like that, you know, for example, you go for the interview, you don't like the people asking the question you don't like the environment you, you see a lot of things as you are there in that office yeah? then mm -hmm. uh, unless you really don't like to get that job there you're hoping that they don't give you a job they don't ask question huh? <laughs> yeah. ask even the simplest question yeah uh, the thing is ask because you want to know something okay mm -hmm. uh, so I, I encourage you to ask the question here is what do you ask mm -hmm. <laughs> what would be your number one question Mm -hmm. Think about it. What, will be a, what will be your number one question? Uh, the interesting about company? Uh, you the want to say what's interesting about, about what, what's interesting about this company? No, that, that that's that's a clear sign that you didn't do your homework. Uh, that's oh, yeah. the specialty in the company that makes me meaningful. Okay, can, can you want to be more specific? What do you mean on that one? But I understand where you're coming from. Good. No. Uh, this is my number one question, yeah, Shatira. Uh, once upon a time ago, uh, I was interviewed by Gamuda and uh, HR general manager after all the interview questions and all that. He asked, uh, okay, Rizal, I've asked all the questions. Do you have any questions to ask me? Mm -hmm. And then I took out my pen. I took out my pen. I opened it. And then I said, where do I sign? Where do I sign? <laughs> And then you said, sign what? Sign appointment letter. Lah. Where do I sign? I'm interested. <laughs> and then you could see his, in his face, oh, hang on, hang on. We have some more inter interviews to be. Uh, and, then, and then he started to say, when you come in, when you come in, when you come in. At that moment of time, I knew I got the job already. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So when you say, where do I sign? What kind of impression are you giving the interviewer? Kesungguhan. Uh, yes. Yeah. You really want a job. You took out your pen already. You might even go and say, oh, where do I sign? Is it my place over there? Oh, that, that. <laughs> okay? That will be your number one question. Number two, number three, you can ask, ask any questions you want. Okay, last uh, question from me. Oh, wait, 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 hang on. One of the stupidest questions that you could uh -huh. ask, eh? uh, company ni buat apa ya? Eh? Uh, that is the most stupidest uh, question. You okay. don't, do not go that way, please. <laughs> I will throw my shoe at you if I'm interviewing you. Yeah? Don't ask, oh, this company do what? Eh? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, next question, Shatira. Question, uh, berapa lama masa yang terbaik untuk perkenalkan diri tu? Waktu temu duga, first impression. When, when you are allowed to introduce yourself yeah, at the mm -hmm. start, uh, okay, go ahead and introduce yourself. Go straight to the point. What's the mm -hmm. point? The point is they are looking for somebody who, has, who is independent, who is able to work as a team, who, who can work under pressure. So you say, mm -hmm. hi, my name is Shatira. I'm a person who is very independent. For example, blah, 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 blah. I'm also a person who is able mm -hmm. to work as a team, blah, 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 blah. So you're still 
talking about yourself. Please, please, please don't talk. My name is Shatira. I come from Terengganu. My house is here. I have four adik-beradik. Don't. Why? Because it's already in the resume. It's already in the resume. Why you want to explain that? <laughs> it's there. Shatira, you must always, always remember. Always, always remember. The reason you are in the interview mm -hmm. is because you have already qualified for the job. Okay. Okay, nah? The reason you are in the interview is because you have already qualified for the job. If you have not qualified for the job, they won't call you in the first place. They won't spend time with you that day. Okay? okay. So, so why, why are they calling you now? Why are you now in front of this interviewer? Because you want to show how relevant you are to what they need. Mm. So go straight to the point. So when it comes to introduction of yourself, go straight to the point. You talk about okay. that. Now, the length of time until they stop you. Because whatever you're saying is relevant. It's not just hearsay. It's not just story, story, story kind of thing. No, no, no. It's, it's straight to the point, right? Yeah. Exactly. And the okay. point are things that they have already mentioned in the advertisement already. Mm. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Sifu. All the best. Okay. Next question. Can I ask a question? Yes, you may. Uh, Zulaika, uh, yes. Uh, what if like the company asks like, why did you choose company like uh, what if like I apply for a Shell job so like why did you choose Shell so why I should why I should answer that kind of question? If if I ask you now, if I ask you now, you say I'm Shell, and I say okay. why did you apply why why did you apply to Shell? What would you answer? Because of your reputations as a good company. Mm, that would be okay. That would be to me number two, number three. Lah. Okay. Okay. I would answer like this. I would answer because Shell has something that I want. Mm -hmm. Shell has a position for this particular job and I'm very interested to do that job. Mm -hmm. Don't bode it, Zulaika. <laughs> <laughs> Don't suck up to people. Okay. If your if your if your interviewer is to answer Hanafi there right in front of you there on the screen there, he'll say you are sucking up to me. Okay. <laughs> Everybody knows who Shell is and, and, and all that. So don't, don't don't tell me what 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 Shell is. So you you straight to the point. What is the point? You want a job, right? Yes. So focus on the job. So you say, right. well, Shell can 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 give me what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a job which can help me do 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 this 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 this. And you you you're practically telling me that you have that job. So that's why mm -hmm. I chose Shell. Or not, I was chosen other companies if they can give me the same thing. Yeah, right. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Man, ask. Hey, this is the time to ask question. Oh, uh, 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 Zulaika also asked about salary. I have a question. Oh, yes, yes, go ahead, this one. Okay. Okay. One one question is, uh, what if the requirement doesn't not match my requirement? So meaning, uh, something like, uh, I'm looking in a safety safety net uh, job, and then they, they require some somebody is uh, have experience in the certification like ISO something, but I don't have okay. that. Okay. Okay. Most um, of the criteria is mentioned related to the auditing, but I hmm. don't have. That, uh, that requirement that they require. Now, if you're talking in terms of the application, when you're applying in the resume level, I would be quiet, quiet about it, or I would say I'm, I'm undergoing, I'm, I'm going through it. I'm going to get it because you know that particular certification is a must for that job. Yeah, it's a must for that job. So you can either say, no, I'm not going to apply because I clearly don't have that. Or you can tell them, uh, once I get the job, I will straight away apply to go for that certification. You also can say that. Yeah? Because in your case, when it comes to safety and OSHA uh, certifications and, and stuff like that, it is very, very, very important. Yeah? Yeah? So to be silent about that can uh, they will, they will, you see, it is based on your resume that they call you for the interview. So you can be silent about that. 
when they call you for interview, then they say, hey, you know, we look through your resume and then we find uh, is one, you don't have this certification. <laughs> so is that what can you do at, at that moment of time? What can you do at that moment of time? You can tell is one, you can say, sir, you clearly knew that I didn't have that certification yet. You call me for this interview because you know I can do the job. <laughs> You know I can do the job. That's why you call me for interview. And that's why I'm here. And I'll get that certification. Once you give me, give me the job, I'll go out and register for that certification. Well, is one. Sometimes it's one. I have had clients tell me, I had some clients tell me, Che Rizal, in the interview, they say, uh, uh, they know I'm a lady. I'm clearly a lady. But in the interview, actually, uh, we're looking for a man. Hmm. How to respond? <laughs> respond, huh? Clearly, you know I'm a lady, but you still call me for an interview. It means that you know I'm good for the job. <laughs> Wear me that. Wear me back. Use it to your advantage. Yeah? Yeah? Thank you, Izzo. Next question. Yes. I have a question. Okay. Now, um, do I still need to send a lengthy resume like what you recommended if the people that I want to go, okay, I mean, they they want to give me the job, okay, but these people I want to go already know me, like much like KP, company director and CEO, they already know me. So do I still give that resume? Well, number one, whether it's uh, two page or 16 pages totally depends on how much you match the requirements, yeah? If you write a 16-page resume, but not one word matches the requirement, no good. If you write a two-page resume, but it doesn't match the requirement, also no good. So it's not a story about whether they know you or not, Kasabaria. In fact, if they know you, they won't even ask for it because <laughs> they know what you do. They know where you're coming from, if they really know you, but, yeah? They know what you can do. That's why they call you, right? Okay. There you go. These are people who don't know you. That's why they ask for a resume. That's why they ask for your profile. They didn't ask, but I was thinking, should I send? Should I give? Again, uh, I, I'm a person who is, uh, I will only help people who ask for help. Yeah. So unless they ask for it, don't give. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Next, come on. What will be my salary? <laughs> Never ever ask that question. <laughs> Never ever ask that question until they talk about it. <laughs> if you're already asking, what will my salary be? Uh? Mm. It shows that you are there not to do the job. It shows that you are there for the salary. So never ask, never bring up that subject until they bring it up. Okay, until they bring it up. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yes, yes ask. Uh, regarding, regarding the salary, mm. if, if they ask me, uh, how much do you want your salary? And then uh, uh, like me, diploma, can you suggest uh, like uh, for diploma? How, how usually the salary would like? Uh, Nuruddin, it, it's not about whether you got a degree or diploma which decides on your salary. Yeah. It's about what you're going to do, the job, oh, okay. what responsibilities you're going to hold, what risks you're going to go through. And because of all of that, they decide on what salary they want to give you. So you cannot go to them and say, oh, because I have a degree, because I have a master's, because I have a diploma, therefore you should be giving me the salary. No. Yeah. You go to them and you say, um, well, based on the, the, the requirements of the job, the, the time you want me to spend, the, the, the risk involved, the safety risk involved. So therefore, this is the salary you, you decide. I would, I would ask them, you know, in the sense that, you know, based on this experience, uh, the, the kind of uh, the, 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 the job that you, you want me to do, the risk involved, uh, what salary would you give? You would decide, you get them, you get them to decide. You don't decide. Oh, okay. so, if, 
So if they say, uh, what salary would you want? You answer based on the cost that you have to go through. Nuruddin, you have to answer yourself macam ni. Before you go for your interview, kan? you list it out. Aku kena bayar uh, sewa rumah, sewa motosikal, uh, bayar loan motosikal, uh, bagi mak sikit. You know, you senarai kan bayar electric bill, internet, kita tengok wayang sekali-sekala. You, you, you list out what your cost. And you think about it. In a month, what's the minimum that you have to have to survive? Okay? All right. Based on that, uh, based on that, then you have an idea of what you can suggest. So when they ask you what salary do you want, then you say, okay, I I have to give mark sikit and then buy my sewa rumah and then traveling to and fro on a daily basis. There will be four tolls to go through then that include, include and this is the amount. <laughs> so at least, at least, at least you're you're not just picking the the the, the figure from thin air. Right. You really think about it. Yeah, and that from the interview from your point of view, say, ha, ah, this person has planning. This person is very organized. Is this not coming out with a figure? Ramai orang din, ramai orang dia akan kata, oh, based on market study, uh, my salary should be a thousand five. If I were the interviewer, I would say, which market? Chowket Road market? <laughs> which market? You say that. <laughs> Okay, so you 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 respond to them based on the facts of yourself. How much do you need to survive in a month? Uh, that's the figure that you give them. All right. Okay. Then. Yeah. Cool. All the best. I can open up to Thank another you. one or two um, more questions. I ask one. one more question. Yes. Uh, oh no, super. Saya, Yeah. yeah uh, what's back. the difference with? Between interviews ataupun interviewer uh, in kerajaan, uh, government sector ataupun private sector. Sebab sekarang ada yang macam dapat interview untuk SPA untuk jadi cikgu. Hmm. So apa uh, perkara yang boleh uh, Shifu share untuk kita at least get knowledge sama ada uh, government ni macam mana, private ni macam mana. Uh, macam, macam, macam tu lah. The difference, the difference is uh, Shatira uh, in a government interview, they interview everybody. Hmm? Government, mm -hmm. they will interview everybody. Okay. That's why when it comes to government punya interviews, sometimes it takes about three months because they're going to interview everybody. Mm. <laughs> okay. Whereas in in a corporate or uh, badan swasta, syarikat swasta, uh, they only interview people who matches their requirements, who uh, who is fit for the job. They already short list. Uh, yeah? Okay. So that's that's the only difference in the way they interview more or less the same. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you. No, Hi, yes. So I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Um, I just need to find out in in Malaysia the current situation right now, mm. in terms of uh, application or job vacancy, mm. is there any barrier to age? No. From from sometimes they will stay out. I mean, you know, we're looking. We're looking for somebody. I mean, they will go out right and say, uh, "We're looking for somebody who is 50 years and above, or you know, less than 30 years, less than 30 years." Or sometimes they will go out right and mention that. But but where where a lot of advertisement I've seen is that they do not specify the age. Okay. But then, in that manner, is it is 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 it okay if we were to apply? Okay, for information, I've just been retrenched actually okay. right. last year. Right. I was on contract because of my age. So the right. company decided still to engage me until the pandemic arrived. Right. And because of as, as a contract staff, uh, they had to terminate me. Right. So right now, uh, I am jobless and I'm trying to search for a, maybe any, 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 any job can do for me, you know, as right. long as I can, I can earn a little bit of money to survive. Right. right. And in LinkedIn, I was approached once by someone from Dubai. Right. Because of the because of my experience and everything, they have right. contacted me. Right. She was about to schedule me for an interview mm -hmm. because she did not look at my age. I think at that point of time, and and <laughs> I, and I, you know, being very um, sincere. <laughs> so Honest, I told, yes. Yeah, so I told her. I said, "Excuse me, did you look at my age or not?" And she said, 
oh, I didn't, I, 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 I didn't look at that. So I told her that what was my age at that point? I was, I was 60 over, okay? Right, right. So when, when she looked at my, oh my dear, she said, I'm so sorry, you're overqualified. <laughs> so I was like, I was so, you know how it feels or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So true, I was true, like, true, true. Oh. Then I realized that age is a barrier you're, for me. You're, you're, you're upsetting the old people here in the group right now. You I'm can so see sorry. That, uh, you, you, you see Tom Sai so and Sabari, they're they are, they are much older than you and they're going, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. I, I don't mean to upset anybody, but this is my experience that no, no, I feel no, very joking, upset, no, you know, no, because no. I, I feel that, oh, I thought that age is not that great barrier for us to apply. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Let, let's, let's hang on, Hefi. Let, let me just answer no first. Yeah, number one, no, age is not a barrier for you to apply. Okay, okay go ahead and apply. Okay, because not all companies are like that company in Dubai. <laughs> for some companies, they couldn't care less how old you are, they just want to know whether you can do the job with the pay that they're going to offer. Yeah, okay. So, for example, that, that, that person in Dubai probably got shocked in the sense of, oh my, with this age, probably will have, she'll, she'll be expecting a high salary kind of thing. Which for you, you say, well, you can pay the bill, that's just fine. Yeah, it's okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah exactly. So, so maybe they didn't explore that even further. So, uh, uh, from my point of view, let's not generalize. Let's not generalize that uh, uh, companies in, in Malaysia or, or anywhere around the world for that, for that matter are like that, whereby age is a barrier. Because it may be a barrier in one company, it may be race in another company, it may be you know, something for another company. So forever there will be, we, we say barriers. Yeah? From my point of view, go ahead, um, apply, uh, update that photograph on LinkedIn. <laughs> but that was that was not 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 that long ago, though. Well, well, it, it shows it shows that you know you don't look your age, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know how some people they put a photograph whereby it's them when they were in their twenties. No, 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 no. Uh, well, some people, some people. I'm saying, some uh, people, I'm saying, right. I'm not saying. I understand, understand. So that, at that, the same that's time, fine. at the same time, I want to I want you to listen from Heffy here. Yeah? Yeah, Hefi has, has, has a lot of experience. He's, he's much, much, much more older than you are. Uh, let, let, let Hefi give you a point of view. Uh, uh, for no, they have a journey for no. Yeah. This is through my experience. Okay. When I left my salary job uh, three years ago, I did mm -hmm. apply for mm -hmm. one senior job in one mm -hmm. airline, mm -hmm. based on my 20 years of experience in aviation. Then. Mm -hmm. Uh, the response came exactly what the, the people said to you. Oh, you are a very senior guy. Uh, why don't you give a chance to the younger guy? Uh, and probably we will appoint you to be our advisor if uh, situation permitted. Mm. Uh, but, <clears throat> but the thing never come. Lah. Macam your case, in case I may read right, they may contact you in case they really wanted you because I think uh, I foresee myself, quote me, uh, after the COVID, uh, post MCO, wherever COVID, I think there will be a lot of job uh, required everywhere. Uh, that, mm. that's, that is my positive uh, forecast. Mm. Do, uh, uh, when it comes to the age, uh, I must say, Malaysia uh, put the cap at 60, Malaysia. Okay. Uh, anything 60 uh, below, uh, they are okay. Above 60, they are mm. tak okay. Dulu kalau before uh, Akta 2012 datang, uh, under 1955 punya act tu, kalau below 55, they accept. Lepas mm. Akta 2012 datang, mm -hmm. they can expand as until 60. Lebih pada 60 tu, uh, they may not uh, hire us, but mm. in case you are unique by your own experience, your right. future, your maturity, <clears throat> and you are specialized in certain job area, mm -hmm. by all means, inshallah, they will hire you uh, probably as an advisor. Yeah, I can. Can I just bring take it out from there, Hafi, from you? 
uh, uh, you know that's a good idea when when they when Hafi says that uh, you 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 position yourself as an an advisor or you can say that you know uh, to that person in Dubai for example you can say uh, well take me because I have double the experience from anybody fresh and you can pay me half the salary <laughs> you know in, in that sense probably they didn't see it that way give them a different perspective. That's it. I mean, that that that's my 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 weakness at that point of time because okay. um, now now you know better. Uh, after you know, after talking to you guys, it gives me a clearer picture of what I can do of and course. how yeah, I should go about it. And um, I'll give it another shot and see how it goes. Of whether course, I course. will be, uh, I will have that kind of opportunity or not. Anybody who turns you down is not worthy of your employment. <laughs> <laughs> you go on that base. Go ahead, Mrs. Anybody who turns you down, you say it's your loss in your mind, lah. In your mind, in your heart, <laughs> don't check out idea. But you say <laughs> your loss, and you go out and go and, and find another job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as Kak Sabara here mentions, don't even mention your age. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't really, but, but you know, I do not want to go and attend it. And then suddenly they say, oh no, you're overqualified. I don't think so. You should come for the interview and so forth. Well, so well, 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 the next time when somebody says, uh, you know, we, we, we find you good. We want to call you for an interview. Respond first by asking, what about me that you find me good for the job? Get it out there, then, then. Uh, what about me that you say I'm unqualified and good for the job? Yeah. And they say, oh, you, you have this, 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 this. Ah, OK, OK, good. So, so it sounds, it sounds yeah, they've done their research. They didn't just read the titles. They, they read the whole thing. Mm. Yeah? So that gives you that confidence to go ahead and proceed. Yeah. All the best to you, Pano. Thank you very much. This is a very good session for me. Thank I learned a lot, even though yeah. this is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, we have more. Inshallah, we have more. Inshallah. Uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, anybody else who have a question to ask? Last one, maybe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, it's Aina again. Uh, yes, Aina. Okay. Uh, let's say attending a physical interview. Uh, do I still need to print out my my resume, my CV, and all, and bring the certificate and all? I yes, bring. Oh. Yeah, you, you 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 bring it along with you. You know why? You see, when when you reach the the company, uh, before you go into the interview, you have to fill out a form. Uh, the form asks you to detail uh, your your experiences. It's called an application form, yeah. And the application form you cannot just like attach your resume with the application empty application form, no. Because the application form is a very it's a document, whereby whereby at the end of the application form you have to sign it and you have to say that uh, every uh, information that you put on this form is true. And if you lie, they have every right to terminate you 24 hours. Yeah. So for you to fill up the application form, you need your resume. Because you don't remember sometimes, you know, the, the, the what year you what year you did this, what year you did that, you know. You you need a reference. So you need your resume. And bring your original sets. Yeah. And the thing is, you can either bring your original sets and put it in a what you call it, a clear folder. Oh, or maybe, or maybe scan it on iPad, you know, when somebody says, well, where's your sets? It's here, uh, the, the original ones in the back, or you, you can check my iPad and, <laughs> and, and do that, you know? So, so yeah, for what? For you, and later on, if they ask for it, okay? Okay, Aina, answer your question? Yes, sir. All right, good. Uh, there was this lady, the Misa or something like that, who, who, who uh, Unmute herself. Yeah. Who put out your hand there? Uh, Z and M. What's your name? Yes, uh, Cik Rizal. Zeti here. Zeti, yes. Yeah. Um, I have a question which is a bit similar to what Puan knows experience, but uh, I'm slightly on the younger side. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't make no make Puan know feel bad. <laughs> okay. Um, I have 13 years of HR experience um, oh. and I have a couple of uh, big oil and gas names under my belt as well. Good for you. Uh, but somehow I, I felt that uh, this deters me from getting other uh, opportunities because I had been called for uh, an, uh, a couple of uh, interviews, uh, which mm -hmm. I had to go to all the way up to meeting their CEO and CFO levels. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but when I met this this uh, big guns, you know, their 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 response will be, uh, oh well, you you have uh, you know, Exxon under you, Petronas you were working with, you had this this all the support responsibility. I'm sure the sal- your salary is high. Mm. And also, we won't be. Uh, we we can't afford to pay you, so we don't think mm. you you be suitable for this kind of job. So I've been getting this kind of remarks mm. um, whenever uh, I, I I go for this interview up to the the, the end level. Mm. So it it really you know uh, depressed me. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm sure. is it okay. my fault that I was hired by by this no, company? No, no, it's company, never your fault. So... No, they call you for the interview, right? right. They very well knew where you were coming from, right? So it's never your fault. Don't 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 knock your head with it. No no no. It's all this. It's, this so so how how can I can I play? Should I play down my resume a bit or no. you know what what's your advice? No no no. Never never play down because you see it is because of your resume you got that interview. You have to understand that. If it weren't for your resume, you wouldn't get that interview with that CEO and CFO and whoever it is. Yeah. So. I don't change anything about your resume in that sense of the word. That don't play it down. No, uh, you have that experience and you know what you can do. Okay, is is that when they come up with those comments, you want to say, well, how about you offer me something and I'll think about it. Exactly my my response. Mm. And 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 they, they they don't come back to you and you just move on. Right. From my my point of view, move on. These these people are not worthy of you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's about it that there's somebody somewhere in the world who needs you who can afford you and they'll pay for you and you right. want to call that you always want to remember Zeki that that you have something which we all call what uh, self-worth don't don't right. don't downgrade that don't 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 create it for anybody okay yeah? and you want to hold on to that and you want to say yes there is somebody who is just waiting for me and you go out and look for them yeah All right, Teresa, thank you. All the best to you. Thank you. All right. <coughs> yeah, if if, if yeah, I may add something. Uh, for the benefit of our younger people here, some some organization like the um they they wet the uh, the CV as what we are our focus point at the moment. And then they They will call this candidate and do a psychometric test. Correct. Uh, I, I think we have to highlight to them to be prepared mm. uh, because they will give depend on 25 questions, some Correct. 25 questions, some 30, mm. some 20. The Correct. ultimate objective of doing the psychometric test though, uh, on mm. the CV, mm. uh, there is can do and will do. They, mm. they have seen both sides of the coin. Right. But now they want to see the inclination of uh, Miss A or Mister A. Mm-hmm. Uh, some some people uh, inclination they are to uh, numerical. They right, right. Score to very good. Right. So they know where this this fellas can put in the statistic, finance, right. uh, accounting. Or right? right. although put their uh, a gender degree and whatnot, but the inclination there. Right. Some people can be very artistic. Wow. Right. Yes. It's been very good in corporate com because kita kena buat banner lah, kena buat apa ah. So just just to share. Yes. But, uh, I'm sure kalau I I I look back my years dengan mm. the present job employment lah, mm. with the digital economy and what not lah, life lot more easy. Eh? Macam you share <laughs> our Puan Roya punya CV, I terkejut. Wow, ada gambar. <laughs> Uh, number one credit to you. You are lucky. You guide her. Huh? I am not lucky. I make my choices. <laughs> uh, no, no, wish good. Wish, wish very good. I saw, I saw few candidates when I was yeah. working. Uh, that yes. kind of uh, a position they portray. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, we yeah. did our HR. Yeah. My my HR manager called there. Yeah. Uh, hang on, hang on, happy. I, I have to cut in. I have to cut in. Let's focus on your. Ah. You, uh, it was a good advice in in the sense of uh, our young graduates ah, uh, going for interviews. They must have some knowledge about the psychometric tests and and stuff like that. My my advice about that is, whatever psychometric tests that you do, bear in mind of work. 
Meaning when you do the test, think about work. Yeah. For example, if I do psychometric tests and I'm thinking about family, I will get one result. If I do the same test and I think about work, I get a different result. Yeah. So I advise whatever test, there's a whole range of tests. There's a whole range of tests, yes. Uh, they, because they want to know uh, what they cannot see in the resume. Uh, they want to know what they cannot Thank see you. in the interview. Yeah. So they have to get into your minds. They get you to do this psychometry test. Yeah. This is that one advice. My tip is whenever you do this test, yeah, which one side has already mentioned this now, bear in mind work. Think about work. Yeah, because if you think about something else, then the results will be something else which not match what they're looking for. Uh, so you make sure you think about work. Then they know that this is how you are uh, 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 looking at work. This is how you organize your work and, and stuff. It's all about work. Yeah. Thank you, Tuan Syed. Uh, Sifu, can I add to yeah. the psychometric yes, punya assessment too? Uh, especially for the young candidates. Um, uh, sometimes the interviewer can uh, uh, test it just by asking a question that sounds very out of the box. For example, mm. they might ask, ask you a question like, so if you could be an animal, what would that be? <laughs> yeah, I've had yeah. Uh, people who told me that they have that sort of question. And of course, you know, yeah. it doesn't sound anything like job related. So they answer yeah. it in a very Tulus class kind of uh, uh, answer and of course uh, that uh, have some sort of effect effect on the uh, on the interview uh, results of the interview. Of course, so, of course. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Maybe one day if somebody wants to organize uh, something like this, okay, and I'll show you how I would answer those those kind of questions. Yeah. For example, there's this question somebody was asked when he went for an interview in Petronas. And then uh, he asked, uh, he was asked, uh, how did you come to Petronas? Oh, I drove here. Then the interviewer asked, what oil do you have in your car now? <laughs> and then he answered, Caltex. And then the interviewer said, okay, your interview is finished. <laughs> so how do you answer an answer? How do you answer a question which you knew, you know, in your car, Caltex? And you don't want to lie because you know if you lie, your body will always tell the truth. So even though that person doesn't learn body language, they feel that you're not really telling me the truth, are you? <laughs> so how do you answer questions like that? <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell me one day, uh, suggest uh, anybody wants to organize one, uh, if, if, if uh, we could do something like this for free and you learn how to answer, how to go for an interview, with NLP. <laughs> now, Tantan Mumuan, throughout this whole session, these two hours with me, uh, we've been using a lot of NLP. It's just that I don't mention where the NLP parts are. I just say it's this technique using called matching and mirroring. Uh, this technique is uh, you create your own uh, reality. Yeah, uh, But I don't tell you where it is because it's not important for you. Yeah, I just show you how to use it. You want to know more about NLP? You can always go to my podcast uh, and learn NLP for free. Yeah, uh, mudahnya guna NLP. That's my podcast, mudahnya guna NLP, and you can listen for free how to learn NLP. Yeah, and I, I share with it for free. Yeah. Thank you very much for the experience. Please share your learning on LinkedIn and on Facebook and wherever you are. Connect with me if you have not, yeah, to learn some more. Inshallah, we will meet again. Uh, we will close this session, and you can take, uh, can and we can leave one by one slowly. Yeah, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.
Rizal. Yes, I Lily. Waited, I waited and I wanted to say thank you so much. This is really <laughs> a great session. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I, and I'm glad that uh, you know some of your teaching is quite I mean aligned with what I know, and okay. yeah, some very interesting is like the the picture and the you know in the resume and the sixty pages, so mm. really very really, very really good because I I can actually use this to advise my nephew. Of course, <laughs> who is of about course. to graduate. Of course, of course. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because... they, they, if you if you ask them, you know, you, if you tell them all this, and they'll 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 get mind blown, and then they'll yeah. say, my lecturer said like this, my lecturer said like that, and then you ask him back, you um, when was the last time your lecturer sent in a resume? Yeah, <laughs> it will be probably twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah, because I also did uh, uh, as a mentor for some of the working adults. And they're trying to change jobs. So so I'm quite aligned. It's just that the part that's very interesting for me is like the resume, 16 pages, because I always been told, hey yeah. Lily, too many pages. Cut, cut, <laughs> cut, cut, cut. Until I, I find, first of all, I'm English is not my major. Right. And then when I cut, cut, cut until I, I see, I pun tak tahu I cakap apa ni, you know. <laughs> so sometimes Lily, I just give up. <laughs> Rohaya, Rohaya sent her resume to about 16 companies. And those companies are all big companies. Uh, you know, uh, Bursa Saham, uh, Airports Malaysia Berhad, Boston, uh, Boston Berhad, you know, all those, those big, big companies. And each and every one of those companies called her for interview. And her wow. resume was 16 pages. She changed more or less the content. She changed the first picture. And, 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 and it works. <laughs> yeah. Three or four companies offered her. <laughs> yeah, because for, for myself, uh, I, I don't really have much uh, experience in interview my, about myself. Right. Because uh, it's kind of like, of course, the first time I changed up is because the salary. Because that right. time I was young. I only look for a salary to fit what I need. Right. Then my second job, I got a second job, and then because of company closing, and then of course I go through interview by the arrangement of our company and all. I actually right. got four. I don't even know how to write resume because that was been arranged by our company, you know, things like that. Right. And I got four right. jobs. I've been offered by four jobs, but four I know jobs. I, yeah. yeah, yeah. That is my fifth job. So I end up, I go to Dell. So in yeah. Dell, I do have interview and yeah. you know the yeah. one thing that because so I, I actually still puzzle is like right. uh, at one time I wanted to interview as an auditor for finance. Okay. So I do not have the financial skill skill background and all this. Right. right. But I have auditing skill. I have twenty over years auditing skill. To me, right. finance is more on number, but the criteria and the the you know the skill of auditing right. can actually apply. But I didn't get the job because I don't have the. So I was so puzzled. Are you looking for skill or are you really looking for you know this kind of thing that I'm actually until today I still cannot understand. <laughs> not, not you have to understand, Lily, that not all interviewers have been trained to do interviewing. Yeah, uh, for example, me lah, Lily. Uh, my my degree was English language and literature. Yeah. My first job was HR executive doing recruitment. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and, and at that time, I, I knew nothing at all about recruitment. <laughs> so not everybody out there knows how to do recruitment as as per it should be done yeah yeah and they, and they just uh they're just like you know they, they just get going through the dark lah. <laughs> uh, they, yeah. they don't know what they're doing they, they don't know what questions they're asking and, and, and it's sad actually it's sad <laughs> yeah it, it's sad <laughs> so far i think i failed to interview one in this and uh, another one because that time i was no qualification and yeah. then I actually was an engineer when I came up. And then they asked, I mean, the HR asked me, oh, you, mm. you say you are the engineer, you are top performer, and you're only from three. <laughs> wow, that, that touched my nerve. Then I said, <laughs> yes. yes, no matter what you think, I told yeah. her, straight away, I said, no matter what you think, I can yeah. tell you I'm from three, I'm an engineer, and I'm yeah. a high performer. And yeah. every year I get the high, you know, uh, salary and audit. 
So yeah. what? I said, then she, I didn't get the job. <laughs> After a few months, she offered me. Then I said, oh. sorry, I, I do not, I, I, I'm okay. I, I'm, I didn't take the job. So I find that you never appreciate me. And exactly. why should I? <laughs> and that, that's a good point, you know. That's a good point. We, we shouldn't be in this mindset that we should grab everything that comes our way. No. Yeah. We, we should choose. Yeah. Because um, they, you might be a good job, they might pay well, but the boss is like from hell. Yeah, you know, true, true. <laughs> and, and, and stuff like that. Like, you know? So that's why I always remind my candidates, you know, when, when you're in an interview, it's a two-way thing. Yeah? The company wants to know you, you should be finding out about the company also. So that's why research is important. That's why, you know, in the interview, you should ask questions to make sure that this is the job that you want to stick to. <laughs> yeah, after that, I actually was the auditor as a customer. Okay. Auditor went to all that right. company. Okay. And then the MD actually said, why all your colleagues are here? Because our company closed down. Most of my colleague is there. Why yeah, okay. are you not here? Why are you not joining us? Then I said, oh, I just not qualified. <laughs> but I didn't tell him the story. Lah. I don't want to make them feel bad. Just, then okay. he take it as a joke. Okay. But really, really, thank you. I, I, Riza, I just wanted to say you're very kind. I think this yeah. is the right time that uh, to share with uh, those uh, people out there who lost yeah. their job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank I you, must agree. Thank you. I must agree. Yeah, Riza, okay. Riza, very kind. He, he, <laughs> she did. I, I, that's what I put. Uh, I hope our younger mm. generation pick up the salient point to yeah. learn how to go and face the prospective employer. That's one Shama. thing. One of the reasons I'm very keen to join this uh, yeah. NLP, one part. Lah. Yeah. Then the process, because obvious, eh, kita dah mm. banyak tukar zaman my time and, and now. Eh, no. uh, have changed a lot. I think mm. when we do this, it's good. I hope, uh, I hope young <laughs> attend tadi to can really yeah, yeah. improvise the yeah, Omnia TV. Sure. Uh, no, like you put it, 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 young it, people. It, it takes a bit of work, like, you know, when you have to uh, find out these words and then match yeah. yourself, elaborate. But then you, Sekarang, especially a lot of young people, like, they just, yeah. uh, they want to just format this sort of resume wrong online, who what, you know, but you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I had, I had a once upon a time ago, a candidate came. And in the resume, she was like, wow, you know, wow. But in the interview, she was not as wow as the resume. <laughs> so I asked her, uh, okay, who wrote your resume? Oh, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did a lot now, did I? <laughs> yeah. on, on, uh, for when I was in MIM, uh, mm. I did a competency-based interview training. Right. And also a behavioral-based interview training. Mm. Uh, mm. Most yang engage saya banyak dulu lah, dulu, uh, ministry by the government. Mm. Uh, a lot. I was very busy doing this. Walaupun saya kerja, saya minta cuti lah. Mm. Uh, in one month, dua hari, pergi buat ni aja. Uh, mm. All my resources still here. Right. Uh, cuma, since the time have changed, mm. uh, now CV pun dah lain. Uh, kita dulu the old norm lah. Old norm. <laughs> Gambar, passport, all of it. Saya pernah jumpa tuan saya. This HR executive, dia kutip tau. All these passport saya fotografi dia, dia kutip, dia letak dekat office dia, dia kata ni, ni, ni. They have no, it's like when somebody does it, I must do it also. That yeah. HR buat macam tu, I pun kena buat macam oh, tu. Betul lah. Nah, they, they, yeah. they, don't, they don't do it for a reason. <laughs> not yeah, more than two pages. Yeah. Uh, not yeah. more than two pages, two referee. <laughs> oh my God. You know, the, 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 those were the those, some, some of the bosses are uh, brother to Saitan. You know. <laughs> put them a referee pun, Allah, don't know where to put, to put Ayo. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we call the former employer, kata Lily, yeah. apply job. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tahu nama, Madam Lim ke Mr. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We call Mr. Peter. Yes, okay, yes. Uh, Mr. Peter, they have Saki eh, from Malaysia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I have one African, uh, your former staff, who yeah. keep to join us. 
Yeah. Yeah, briefing about yeah. our madam lady yes. just briefly. Yes, yes. Yeah. Briefly only. Uh. Right, right. Mr. Peter so kind. Yes. Uh, lady oh champion yeah. and dapat yeah, 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 to yeah. change the environment uh, that right, right. the job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she the, yeah, yeah. the, the former boss. Some of them are that good. True. I recommended five. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Yang yeah. join government lah. Because yes. they masuk PH, PTD lah. I buat tu kan. I bagi nak masuk polis. DSP lah, ASP lah. Mm. I buat. Mm. I, I right. tak tahan dia orang. I cakap tuan right. lah. Bukit Aman call. I said tuan. Dia orang minat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bagilah can kat dia orang. Dia minat betul lah. Dia suka uniform. Tak tahu apa hal lah. <laughs> those were those the day we doubt about our boss whether we give we we hide thing <laughs> from the boss to apply new job. We hide. <laughs> yeah. Now also yeah. must hide. Now also must hide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, lah, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Tansai. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll be leaving. Okay. Thank you, thank you Lily. Bye bye. Bye. I go there. Eh? Bye bye. Yeah, thank you. Have thank a good weekend. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye. 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 Thank you, Shatira. Assalamualaikum, Sifu. Hello, Doctor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That was very interesting. Now, um, uh, would, if I were to invite you to give a talk like this uh, for university students mm. going to graduate or have gra just graduated, would you okay. be able to do it too? Oh yeah, can. Sure. Uh -huh. um, do you want to just do a resume saja ke atau resume and interview? In resume interview, what I found uh, just now, we didn't have enough time for question and answer. I think yeah. more people want to ask questions. So if we, we can do the question and answer more, mm. because these people, some, many of these people have already gone through the interview, uh, sorry, the, the resume and interview session one, one way or another. Lah. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, um, okay, I will, I will, I will see uh, with the student organizer there and if okay. they... I will look for a slot for you. Is that okay? Can, can. Uh, if it's online, it's two hours. Yeah. Uh, if you want a resume and interviews, it's then short. probably two hours uh, in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Uh, this I, session... haven't I haven't really covered uh, interviews. So this session today was just on a resume? Only on resume because that was a request from, from, from somebody. Uh, and, said, okay. And, and you see, the, the questions are more of uh, on the interview, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I would rather you know, focus on the resume first. Oh, and then, okay. okay. Well, you want to ask me any other questions? Oh, then. Okay. Let, let me let me ask let me ask students uh, uh student organizer whether we need maybe just interview yeah. because that's that's where it's more relevant to them. They may have good resumes. Yes. Uh, yeah. but uh, the way of asking question answering I, I like your responses to those questions because you have this. Uh, Yeah. You bear in mind, uh, bear in mind uh, they need to also you know, uh, be ready that uh, result comes from a totally different approach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can, I can see that, I can see that. But I, I, I know the background of where you are okay. you're coming okay. from, so I understand okay. that. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I, was, I was going to ask a question just now that, you, ah. I mean, I mean personally, but uh, yeah. you know, you say this is, this, is uh, this is what resume writing is based on NLP, but you already answered the question. Because no. I said you, you never mentioned about NLP. Uh, well, but you just mentioned all those things. Uh, I know it's really it relates to NLP. Uh, yeah. Um, Anybody who is from an NLP background would say, ah, Riza is using matching and mirroring here. Uh, is it that I, I go to because for them it's not important. They will just want to know how to use it. I'll go more on application rather than mm. talk about the definition of what nice. NLP and matching and mirroring is all about. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, sounds good. Okay, yeah. I'll get it. I'll get in touch with you. Thank you, doctor. Thanks, Ivo. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Salam alaikum. Hey, ni Rudy.